Hi and welcome back. I am Dhruv Daga. So now, before we start off with revising economic laws, I want to tell you something about an MCQ sheet. I have attached an MCQ sheet in the video description. This MCQ sheet doesn't contain a lot of MCQs. It just contains somewhere around 50-55 MCQs. They are from different chapters of the syllabus. So now these MCQs, hai, they are divided. What, what you can say, they are, can be divided into two categories. One is remembrance MCQs and the second is conceptual MCQs. So remembrance based MCQs jo hote hai, so those may the options will help you answer because kya hoga agar aapne wo chota sa padha bhi hoga kabhi to aapko wo click ho jayega options se garan. conceptual mcqs mein the options might end up confusing you so the best way of dealing with conceptual mcqs is ki aap apna answer ek pehle se soch ke rakho before you read the options try and define what the answer would be otherwise kya hota hai option read karne se aapka jo original answer hota hai aap usko ho sakta hai bhul jao and change kar lo I am not saying don't read the options. Read the options after you have formulated some answer. That will help you ensure that you are unnecessarily confused. Nahi hoge. So now these are MCQs. Hain. Aapko ye MCQ solve karna hai. Ye MCQ solve karne ke baad, you will get an idea that you are how many are right and how many Now these MCQs, jo hain, obviously 50 MCQs are not the only MCQs which can be made. The institute can make 5000 MCQs. But we cannot do so many MCQs and it doesn't make sense. We are doing these representative MCQs to understand number one ki MCQs ko attempt kaise karna. MCQs attempt kaise karna will become very clear with these MCQs. And second is ki ye MCQs mein apne ko taklif kya ja raha hai. So agar apne ko remembrance wale based MCQs agar nahi aa raha hai. That means ki apne number of revisions na proper nahi hu hai. We need to revise things once more. Agar apne ko conceptual based MCQs mein agar taklif ja rahi hai. Then in that case, that means ki even though apne ho sakta hai, revisions huye honge, wo thik tarike se apne tab revise nahi kiya hai. We might be not going into deep into sections. Ho sakta hai, hum book band karke revise kar rahe ho. Ya ho sakta hai, hum ek baar khat se sirf jo main cheez hai, wo read karke section se aage bad ja rahe ho. So we need to understand. So step one is obviously solving these MCQs. Step two would be understanding ki aapke kitne sahi huye, kitne galat huye MCQs. Now these MCQs are not the easiest of MCQs, but these yes, main sections of chapters say MCQs. So if you don't have MCQs, nahi aa rahe, we can categorize it as moderate to difficult MCQs. These MCQs, aapka step 2, you have to do how many come and how many come. Step 3 will be analyzing why they don't come. And that step also then involves that if we could do what we could do, that our MCQs would come. If you read that section a little more deeply, read kar lete, so that means that that is the key to understanding ki apne baaki sections mein bhi apne ko kya adopt karna hai apni galti kya ho rahi hai these mcqs jo hain there also lot of them are case based mcqs because that's what the new thing is and case based mcqs karne se ek fayda aur kya hota hai ki apne concepts bhi test ho jate hain so ye jo mcqs hain they can as it is be asked as four markers in the exam so once we are sure of these MCQs, we have a level of certainty that conceptually we are okay, sound. If there are 4 marker questions in this cube, 6 marker questions in this then in that case we are able to answer those. So that's what you are going to do. And after MCQ solve after solving, if you are unable to understand, there is no worry about it. If there is no MCQ, it doesn't matter. We still have a lot of time at our hand. We can always rectify. So in fact you should become happy. If you don't have anything to do, it's very easy to deal with it. अपने को समझ गया अच्छा ठीक है अपने को ये नहीं आता है. अगर सब कुछ आ गया तो ये वरी करने के बात हो जाता है. यार this is CA final like how can you know everything? So, so if you're not getting something, don't get worried. That means that there is some scope for you to improve and we have sufficient time for that improvement. So आप ये MCQs करिए, आप analyze करिए. आपको अगर तकलीफ जाती है analyze करने में समझने में, you can always connect with me. We'll discuss things out. So now let's start with our revision. Obviously, the revision ke disclaimers first video mein the, that continue here also that this is high on content and high on speed. It's a revisionary video. It's not an explanatory video. Let's start with FEMA 1999. So the first definition that we start with is the person resident in India more than 182 days resides in preceding financial year condition number one 
so the general rule is that then he becomes a person resident in india however if in the current financial year such a person leaves india for specified purpose then in such case he'll become a person resident outside india specified purpose matlab business vocation employment or for an uncertain period ab ye baat hui individuals ki now talking about entities so the first is registered incorporated in india second is branch office agency in india owned and controlled by a person resident outside india matlab that branch office agency is in india the third one is branch office agency outside india owned or controlled by a person resident in india all of these will be person resident in india then we start talking about current account transactions so current account transactions are very simply defined they are defined as transactions which are not capital account transactions capital account transactions jo hain they are defined as transactions which alter the position of assets and liabilities including contingent liabilities outside india of a person resident in india or which alters the assets and liabilities of a in india of a person resident outside india matlab ya to bahar ke andar ka hota hai ya andar ke logo ke bahar ke assets liabilities affect hote hain then they are capital account transactions so current account transactions pe let's come back current account transactions can be divided into three schedules schedule 1 is prohibited current account transactions aap kuch bhi kar lijiye kisi se bhi permission le lijiye these transactions are not going to be allowed prohibited current account transactions i have divided into three categories one is lottery so this includes lottery tickets purchase then winnings from lottery no remittance can be allowed from sweepstakes from football pools banned prescribed magazines all of these you cannot remit your winnings out of the country and winnings from horse races or other hobbies then the second category is commission interest or dividend so commission if it is received on basis of or for an export to a wholly owned subsidiary or a joint venture abroad or commission which is received under exports made under the rupee state credit route except if it is for tea tobacco then up to 10% of the invoice value it shall be allowed then dividend dividend remittance by companies on which dividend balancing is applicable and commission in dividend and interest so interest from a special non resident scheme next one is the call back services on the telephone so now we talk about schedule 2 transactions schedule 2 transactions are transactions jahan par prior approval of central government is required before doing these transactions the first one is cultural tours you require permission of the ministry of hrd that is human resources development and that's a department of education and culture then there is if you want to give out prize money or sponsorship for sports activities you require permission of the ministry of hrd department of youth affairs and sports however if you are a national international sports level in national international state level sports body then in that case you do not require permission or if your amount is up to rupees 1 lakh then you will not require permission 1 lakh dollars then the next one is the four these are related to transport so the first one is if it's a freight by a psu or if it is a cif basis import that is cost insurance freight basis import by a psu or the state government then it's the ministry of surface transport chartering wing if it is a multimodal transport operators multimodal transport operators paying commissions to their agents abroad then you require a registration certificate from the director general of shipping if you want to pay container detention charges more than the rate which is prescribed you require permission from the ministry of surface transport director general of shipping because this rate is also prescribed by the director general of shipping then we come out to there is a pni club so these pni clubs require permission from the ministry of finance insurance division the insurance division and then there is an advertisement in a foreign print media by a state government or the psu 
this requires a permission from the ministry of finance the department of economic affairs up to ten thousand dollars is all right yafir yeah, it is for the purpose of a tourism or for promotion of international bidding or foreign investment then it shall be allowed the last one is if you want to hire pay hiring charges for transponders or television channels then ministry of information and broadcasting if you want to pay out for isps that's the internet service providers then it's ministry of communication and information technology all transactions which are not covered in the schedule 1 and schedule 2 fall in schedule 3 so sare jitne current account transactions baki bache rahenge schedule 3 requires a prior permission of rbi however there is a liberalized remittance scheme which says that up to 250000 dollars if you want to make the payments then in that case you can make the payment without permission of rbi as well you do not require any permission however if the, the condition is that up to like fifty thousand dollars, if you have to do it, then RBI permission. But there are three activities: that is emigration, education, and then there is the health services. If you get a letter from the medical institute, educational institute, or the country of emigration that you require to spend more, then you can spend more even without the permission of the RBI. Then there are certain other persons other than individuals. For them also the liberalized remittance scheme is available. However, for these other than individuals, there are four additional benefits which are given. So if they fall within these limits, they still do not require permission even though they might exceed the liberalized remittance scheme. Which are which areas? Hai? The first one is the for creation of a chair in an education institute, creation of a trust fund other than an investment fund in an educational institute or for a technical institution in the same field as its business then 1% of its foreign exchange earnings in the preceding 3 years or 5 million dollars whichever is less if it is for consultancy then infrastructure projects 10 million dollars other than infrastructure projects it's 1 million dollars then we talk about the third thing that is for pre-incorporation expenses, the limit is 5% or 1 lakh dollars, whichever is more. If it is for commission on the sale of residential flats or commercial plots, then in that case, you can pay up to 5% of the inward remittance or 10,000, uh, sorry, $25,000, whichever is higher. If you want to pay out from the RFC, that is a resident foreign currency account, then there is no requirement of any permission. Same rule is for EEFC, but for EEFC, the exemption is not available for three. That is this one, one, two, and three, the PNI club. So for these three, the EEFC exemption is not available. If you are on a foreign travel, can you pay by an international credit card? Yes, you can. Then the major two current account transactions of the country are imports and exports. So for imports, the thing which can happen, the first thing is the mode of payment which is allowed. So there are prescribed modes by RBI, you can pay out by cards or any of the prescribed modes. The other exemptions which are given to residents is number one, you can pay by a crossed check for gold and silver. You can pay in rupees for the lodging boarding of a person resident outside India. You can pay in rupees the remuneration, sitting fees or whatever to a non-executive, that is a non-hold time, non-hold time director of the company as per whatever resolutions of the company, agreements with the company, articles and so on. Then the time limit within which the import payments need to be made is general rule 6 months. You can ask for an extension, the maximum extension which can be given at a single time is 6 months, the total which can be given is 3 years. If you have to 1 year se jada ka extension, dena hai, then there is a condition that you need to abide by that outstanding should not exceed 1 million dollars or 10% of the average import remittances of preceding 2 financial years, whichever is less and investigative agencies ke saath aapke cases nahi khule hone chahiye then there is a deferred payment credit scheme which is available up to 5 years import of goods ke bare mein time limit tha amount tha 
इम्पोर्ट ऑफ अगर आपको करेंसी करना है देन वील डिवाइडेड इन टू इम्पोर्ट ऑफ इंडियन करेंसी इम्पोर्ट ऑफ अ फॉरन करेंसी इफ इट इज इंडियन करेंसी यू कैन ब्रिंग इन टू इंडिया अमाउंट अप टिल ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड रुपीज एट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम फ्रॉम एनी कंट्री अदर देन नेपाल भूटान फ्रॉम नेपाल भूटान देर इज नो अपर लिमिट यू कैन ब्रिंग इन एज मच एज यू वॉन्ट बट द मैक्सिमम डिनोमिनेशन ऑफ द नोट्स कॉइंस दे कैन बी रुपीज हंड्रेड देन इफ इट इज अ फॉरन करेंसी देन इफ यू आर ब्रिंगिंग इन टू इंडिया और यू सेंडिंग इन टू इंडिया यू कैन फ्रीली सेंड इन टू इंडिया एनी अमाउंट अदर देन बाई वे ऑफ बैंक नोट्स ट्रेवलर्स चेक्स और करेंसी नोट्स If you are bringing into India, then you will need to provide with a declaration form. That is a custom declaration form. Currency declaration form needs to be given. However, if the amount brought in is up to ten thousand dollars in total by way of currency notes, bank notes, travellers checks, or is up to rupees five thousand dollars by way of currency notes, both of the limits need to be complied with. Then in that case, you do not need any declaration. Guarantees can be given by authorized dealers. There are certain service importers for which guarantees can be given by authorized dealers. The first guarantee talks about it can be given for a public sector undertaking, a departmental undertaking, state government. The maximum limit is one lakh dollars. If you want to give more, then you require permission from the Ministry of Finance, the central government. However, if there is any other entity, then up to five lakh dollars. और इक्विवेलेंट ऑलवेज डॉलर्स में लिखा हुआ है बट इट्स ऑलवेज इक्विवेलेंट इफ इट्स एनी अदर करेंसी देन इन दैट केस इक्विवेलेंट कैन बी गिवन वी टॉक अबाउट एक्सपोर्ट्स देर आर टू मेन फॉर्मेलिटीज दैट नीड टू बी डन विद एक्सपोर्ट्स द फर्स्ट वन इज दैट वाइल एक्सपोर्टिंग यू विल नीड टू मेक अ डेक्लेशन तो एन एक्सपोर्ट डेक्लेशन फॉर्म ई डी एफ विल नीड टू बी गिवन इन डुप्लीकेट और इफ यू आर डूइंग फॉर सॉफ्टवेयर देन अ सॉफ्ट टेक्स फॉर्म नीड्स टू बी गिवन इन ट्रिप्लीकेट also you need to mention the full value of the goods that you are exporting in this declaration form also you will need to declare that you will be able to realize the amount which you have mentioned as a full value in the declaration now this amount needs to be realized within a period of 9 months that's the general rule however if you are sending out to your own warehouse and you do not have a certainty and there's no sale which has happened when you are exporting then the 9 month period doesn't apply but in totality within 15 months from the export you will need to realize that amount back if your entities are special entities eous ehtps stps btps status holders sez units then always your limit shall be 9 months then if you can if you are receiving any advance for your exports you can receive it the maximum period within which you will need to export the goods is within a period of 1 year 1 year ke andar aapne goods export nahi ki aap advance without permission of rbi refund nahi kar sakte interest can be given up to maximum of liber plus 100 bps if there is an agreement which says that the goods need to be exported after 1 year that is allowed Let's talk about capital account transactions. There are five capital account transactions which are prohibited. They are not allowed to be dealt with. So that's chit funds, nidhi companies, agricultural plantation activities, real estate transactions. However, there are exceptions. So construction of townships, bridges, dams, reeds, they are allowed. TDR trading, that's transferable developmental right tradings, are not allowed. Then. Let's talk about ECBs. That's external commercial borrowings. So external commercial borrowings can be categorized into two routes. The first route is a foreign currency route, and the second is an Indian currency route, INR route. So if it's a foreign currency route, the port trusts SEZ units, port trust SEZ units, and two banks, that is SIDB and EXIM, can deal with it. For INR currency routes, so these. plus certain micro finance organizations can deal with it the country to which from which the ecb is being taken needs to be an fatf or ios iosco compliant country the minimum average maturity period needs to be generally 3 years all in cost borrowings should not exceed the benchmark plus 450 bps if there are any other costs involved such as penalty or something prepayment charges 
then they can maximum amount to 2%. Then the routes which are given here, the one route which is there is the automatic route and one is the approval route. If you are taking an ECB under the automatic route, the limit is dollars 750 million. Up to this, you can take under the automatic route. You want to take more, you need approval route. There is one more limit. If it's a direct equity holder, then he can give a maximum debt maintaining a ratio of 7 is to 1. However, to this condition, there is an exception. If the ECB is for a 5 million dollars, then in such case, this debt ratio need not be seen. Then there is an overseas direct investments in the joint ventures and wholly owned subsidiaries. So number one, what will amount as a financial commitment in these joint ventures and wholly owned subsidiaries? That's 100% of all equity, preference shares, loans, whichever is given. Guarantees and counter guarantees ka bhi 100% will be taken. There is a performance guarantee of which only 50% shall be taken. This entirely in aggregate will amount to whatever is the financial commitment. Now this financial commitment should be not more than 400% of the net worth that is paid up share capital plus free reserves of the entity. There is an upper limit second condition which is given that is this the maximum overseas direct investment without approval can be up to 1 billion dollars. So both of these conditions need to be maintained. Now we come out to a miscellaneous portion of this chapter. If any appeals need to be made, so you need to see who was the adjudicating authority. If the adjudicating authority was an assistant or deputy director of the enforcement directorate, then in that case the appeal goes to a special director appeal. However, if it was another adjudicating authority or it was the special director appeal, then in that case it will go to the appellate tribunal it will go to the appellate tribunal then in that case and if it is the appellate tribunal then in that case the appeal will go to the high court the high court appeal is 60 days all of the remaining appeals the amount of the number of days is up to 45 days penalty there is a general penalty which is provided if the amount of is quantifiable then in that case it is three times up to three times the amount if it is not quantifiable, then it is 2 lakhs. However, if it is a continuing offense, then it is for 5000 per day. You will be given 90 days to pay this fine. If you do not pay this fine within 90 days, then we will see whether the amount of fine is more than rupees 1 crore. Then in that case, a jail term of 3 years is, has been prescribed. If it is a less than equal to 1 crore, then a jail term of 6 months is prescribed. If you are imprisoned and you make payment of the fine during imprisonment, you shall be released on the payment of the fine. Compounding of offences is allowed under the ED and RBI officer. They need to compound it within 180 days of the application. Let's now move on to the next chapter. Now let's start with the Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002, PMLA 2002. Sabse pehle, the definition of money laundering is let's divide it up into parts. The first part is whosoever directly or indirectly, this is the first, then attempts to indulge or knowingly assists or is knowingly a party or is connected with an activity or process involving the proceeds of crime, including its acquisition, use, possession or concealment and claiming it to be untainted property or projecting it to be untainted property shall be guilty of the offence of money laundering. Important definition then if you are found guilty of offence of money laundering what can be the punishment that can be given to you? That section 4 it says from 3 years say 7 years minimum 3 years maximum 7 years general rule however if it's involving part A sorry para a part 2 of the schedule then in such case that's a narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances act 1985 you can have a maximum imprisonment of 10 years 3 say like 10 years obligations of banking companies the act places obligations on banking companies for maintaining records and verification of identity of its clients and beneficial owners 
the first obligation for records is to be able to reconstruct transactions to an individual level such information as may be required to be furnished to the director within a specified period of time and such information required for the identity or records of the identity of the client or beneficial owner needs to be maintained for a period of five years then jo verification of client's identity or beneficial owner's identity there are four methods which have been prescribed the first one is through an online verification or an authentication under the aadhaar the second is a offline verification under the aadhaar act the third is a passport verification and the fourth one is other modes as may be prescribed by the central government the director has certain powers that it can cause an inquiry to be made or may have a special audit conducted from the panel which is maintained by it the expenses of such as audit shall need to be met by the director now in this case if there is any non compliance with the requirements the director may issue a warning may give specific instructions to be complied with may also ask reports to be submitted to it on a specified intervals or may also impose a monetary penalty of rupees 10000 to rupees 1 lakh in case of any property being involved in money laundering then a provisional attachment can be made provisional attachment requires a director or other person not below the rank of a deputy director authorized by a director to carry this out maximum period is 180 days for a provisional attachment to be in force it requires a permission from the magistrate however if permission of magistrate may lead to frustration of the proceedings of money laundering and it is so urgent then in such case such a provisional attachment can be done without obtaining a permission adjudication hoga after this provisional attachment then confiscation if agar aapka you have found that you are guilty of the offence of money laundering or it's adjudicated that it's guilty the property is involved it shall be confiscated and be vested as a property in the central government free of all encumbrances there will be no liens no charges on such property they will move to the central government appellate tribunal ke samne aap appeals place kar sakte hain against the director or against any order passed by an adjudicating authority within a period of 45 days special courts have been constituted for speedy trials so this special courts they generally the offenses which are tried under the prevention of money laundering act these are non bailable offenses however the bail can be given in certain circumstances generally the public prosecutor shall be given an opportunity of being heard and only if the court believes that when on bail such person shall not commit the offence then only a bail can be given however an exceptions to this general rule is women person below or equal to the age of 16 years a sick or infirm and where an offence of less than 1 crore has been committed this 1 crore is jointly so if there are co-accused then in that case the amount along with the co-accused is 1 crore say less reciprocal arrangements can be made by india with other countries so india can ask for information from other countries can send a letter for request for obtaining information such information which is received from such other countries can be used and considered as a purpose of evidence a special court permission is required for sending such a letter alternatively the other country if requires can also ask the government for a request of information and our government shall also provide such information this can be for preventing offences or for the purpose of investigation of offences fines penalties if imposed under the pmla they need to be paid within a period of 6 months otherwise the officer under the pmla will act as a recovery officer and have the same powers as a tax recovery officer under the income tax act now if companies commit the offence of money laundering in companies here in we also mean associations of persons bodies of individual and everybody in this case we will see who were the person in charge of the company the person in charge of the company shall be deemed to be guilty of the offence of money laundering however if there was no negligence on his part or he had exercised a due diligence that he shall not be guilty of the offence of money laundering and if any other director manager officer of the company secretary these people 
are found that they were directly involved in this offense of money laundering they shall be guilty and if they are found guilty of any neglect so this was prevention of money laundering act we'll move on to the next act now now let's talk about the arbitration conciliation act 1996 the first thing that we're going to talk about is the basic features of arbitration and how is arbitration different from litigation there are eight points in this the first three points are basically they are major topics in the chapter itself arbitration agreement arbitral award and arbitral tribunal or arbitrator arbitrator say the fourth point comes up that seat of arbitrator that is what are the laws what are going to apply to this arbitration proceeding arbitral awards say enforcement of an arbitral award it happens as a decree of the court and there are several international treaties for enforcement of arbitral awards then there are three advantages the last three points are advantages of arbitration that is number one party autonomy confidentiality and finality of outcome party autonomy means there's a lot of flexibility which is available to the parties your parties and they can choose their own arbitrator or they have their own procedure set up the other thing is confidentiality there's a high degree of confidentiality in arbitration the parties and the arbitrator are bound by strictest levels of confidentiality they cannot disclose it unlike litigation where a lot of this is under public purview there it's under public view then in that case confidentiality is not a very good option in litigation however arbitration may the arbitrator cannot disclose it to any other person then the last one is finality of outcome like in litigation we see there are a lot of appeals which can happen after the district court it can go to the high court supreme court and so on however for arbitration the the award is final it can be challenged on only very select few grounds next let's talk about the arbitration agreement so there can be two types of arbitration agreement one is arbitration clause and then the other one is a submission agreement agar jo aapka agreement tha contract tha originally usi ke andar ek clause dala gaya if there's a clause inserted that in case of any dispute the parties would go in for arbitration and this is known as an arbitration clause it was inserted before the dispute took place in the original agreement itself However, for a submission agreement, if at the original agreement there was no arbitration clause, however, after the dispute arises, the party decides that instead of going to the court, they should go for a arbitration, then this agreement of going in for arbitration after the dispute arises is a submission agreement. General principles ke baare mein baat kare agar. So the, the five points in this, number one, it should be enforceable by law, it's an agreement, enforceable by law hona chahiye. Agreement a contract hai, so isme consensus ad item, that is meeting of the minds, intelligent mind apply hona chahiye. What you are signing for, that you are agreeing, arbitration agreement needs to be in writing. So what you are agreeing for needs to be understood by you and you should apply an intelligent mind for it. Then there is an ouster of jurisdiction. So if the parties sign that they want to go in for arbitration then a single party they cannot now go to court so that's why this arbitration agreement in writing is very important because they stop one legal remedy of going to court of the parties now the only remedy to them is to go in for arbitration all of the parties together can decide that they do not want to go in for arbitration and want to go to the court however single unilaterally a party cannot decide then there are two points that is a doctrine of separability doctrine of separability says that an arbitration agreement and the original agreement even though they may be together they are separate so if the original agreement is terminated say by way of breach then in that case that agreement even though that is terminated the principal contract is terminated the arbitration agreement survives they are separate from each other even if a question on the validity of the original agreement is raised still the arbitration agreement is separate and the arbitrator will have a right to rule over this agreement so that's what takes us to the last point is competency to rule in your own jurisdiction so whether the arbitration is a valid thing or not that can itself be decided by the arbitrator himself so that's why he is a competent to rule in its own jurisdiction what are the requirements of valid arbitration agreement first is basics that it needs to be written it needs to be signed 
तो स्पेसिफिक वर्ड्स होना जरूरी नहीं है स्पेसिफिक वर्ड्स की दिस इज एन आर्बिट्रेशन अग्रीमेंट ऐसा लिखा होना जरूरी नहीं है इट शुड वेरी क्लियरली इंडिकेट विदाउट एनी डाउट दैट द पार्टी इज वॉन्ट टू गो एंड फॉर आर्बिट्रेशन दैट इज द रिक्वायरमेंट देन द बेसिक कंडीशन फॉर एन आर्बिट्रेशन टू टेक प्लेस इज डिस्प्यूट दैट नीड्स टू बी अ डिस्प्यूट इट्स एन ऑल्टरनेट डिस्प्यूट रेजोल्यूशन मेकेजम so for arbitration proceedings to trigger in there needs to be a dispute that dispute needs to be arbitrable there are certain disputes like criminal cases hai testimony matters divorces these are not arbitrable so the dispute needs to be arbitrable as well then defined legal relationships should exist between the parties arbitration is not available for illegal activities it is available only when there is a legal relationship between parties consensus ad item which was there earlier itself and it should be a final outcome arising out of an arbitration finality of outcome now an arbitration agreement can also be made through reference for example the parties they decide that they had some agreement earlier or there is some other agreement in force between two different set of parties also they may refer to this agreement or a model agreement if that contains an arbitral clause so that is also a valid arbitration agreement referring to another agreement which also has an arbitration provision in it also is a valid arbitration agreement now how can an arbitration agreement be terminated mutual consent all the parties they decide that they want to terminate the arbitration agreement that terminates it termination of principal contract this is by performance if it is by way of breach then in that case doctrine of separability will trigger in and the arbitration agreement will survive operation of law there can be certain cases wherein the agreement itself shall be considered void or shall be considered to become void later on does debt lead to the arbitration agreement being terminated no the death of the parties does not lead to an arbitration agreement being while terminated now let's talk about arbitrator or arbitral tribunal so an arbitral tribunal there can be a sole arbitrator or there can be a panel of arbitrators the number of arbitrators should be odd the reason is that the decisions should be able to be taken by majority now if a proceeding has taken place there were even number of arbitrators however the arbitrators did not disagree they gave a decision by majority then in that case can a party raise a claim that there were even number of arbitrators so this judgment is void no they cannot raise it if an even number of arbitrators give by majority a decision on regards on an arbitration then any of the parties cannot claim that the arbitration proceedings are not valid just by reason of there being only even number of arbitrators appointment of arbitrators appointment of arbitrators happens by way of there can be various methods it's dependent on the parties how they want to appoint one of the ways for appointment is that the parties they agree on some person to be appointed as arbitrator or the parties appoint one one arbitrator each and the third or the presiding arbitrator is appointed by these one one arbitrators or they may also refer to a particular post for example president of an industries association or president of icai to become the arbitrator so that person will become the arbitrator in this are there any requirements in respect of an arbitrator yes the arbitrator can belong to any nationality citizenship is not a bar whether he is an indian citizen american citizen or any other citizen doesn't matter to us two most important things in arbitration is number 1 the arbitrator should be capable of contracting he cannot be a minor or a person other etc like not capable of contracting the reason is arbitration agreement is an agreement it's a contract so if that person is not capable of contracting then in that case he cannot agree to sign up for arbitration then jo arbitrator hai usko lack of bias hona chahiye he should not be biased it's a very important thing agar uska bias prove ho jata hai then appeal can be raised against him so bias is a factor is based on two factors so the first factor is independence independence arises agar arbitrator and koi party ke beech mein koi relationship ho for example father son so they are cannot be said to be independent of each other however if the party the other party say for example party a and the arbitrator are father and son party b knew that they are father and son and still agreed waived off the condition that doesn't matter 
दे स्टिल फादर एंड सन डजन मैटर वी स्टिल वॉन्ट हिम एज एन आर बी ट्रेटर दैन इफ पार्टी बी लूज कैन ही रेज अ कंटेंशन दैट देर वॉज नो इंडिपेंडेंस एंड ये गलत हो गया हमारे साथ नहीं आफ्टर यू हैव वेव्ड ऑफ अ कंडीशन फॉर इंडिपेंडेंस इंडिपेंडेंस अराउज ड्यू टू रिलेशनशिप्स आफ्टर यू नो दैट दिस रिलेशनशिप एग्जिस्टेड एंड यू हैव वेव्ड ऑफ दैट कंडीशन देन यू के नॉट क्लेम अ एनी बायस ऑन द आर्बिट्रेटर्स पार्ट देन इम्पार्शियलिटी इज द अदर फॉर्म बाय विच लैक ऑफ बायस नीड्स टू बी प्रूव इम्पार्शियलिटी इज अ स्टेट ऑफ माइंड देर इज नो रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन दीज पार्टीज हाउ एवर वॉट इज देर बिटवीन दैम इज नथिंग देर एग्जिस्ट नो रिलेशनशिप बट दिस आर्बिट्रेटर इज मोर फेवरिंग ही इज मोर फेवरेबल टू द पार्टी वो बोलता है कि नहीं जनरली इसको चांस देता है बोलने का उसकी बात ज़्यादा सुनता है तो दैट इज वॉट इम्पार्शियलिटी मीन्स तो एन आर्बिट्रेटर शुड बी इम्पार्शल तो ड्यूटीज ऑफ एन आर्बिट्रेटर नंबर वन नो डिले अननेसेसरीली आप प्रोलॉन्ग नहीं करना चाहिए प्रोसेस ट्वेल्व मंथ्स में आर्बिट्रेशन शुड जनरली बी फिनिश्ड डिलीबरेशन डिले हम नहीं करने बोल रहे हैं इसका ये मतलब नहीं जल्दी जल्दी आप कुछ भी कर दो यू नीड टू डिलीबरेट यू नीड टू टॉक अबाउट थिंग्स प्रॉपरली फुल डिस्कशन होना चाहिए फुल डिस्कशन होना चाहिए तो कैसे एक जन के साथ एक ही पार्टी के साथ नो यूनिलैटरल कम्युनिकेशन बोथ द पार्टीज शुड बी अवेयर ऑफ ऑल ऑफ द कम्युनिकेशन अगर आपको कोई एक पार्टी से कुछ कम्युनिकेशन आता भी है आर्बिट्रेटर देन आर्बिट्रेटर यू नीड टू पास ऑन दैट कम्युनिकेशन टू द अदर पार्टी दिस विल ऑल्सो हेल्प द अदर पार्टी टू प्रोवाइड अ मैक्सिमम आर्ग्यूमेंट अगेंस्ट ऑल द पॉइंट्स एंड इट विल मेक आर्बिट्रेशन वेरी फ्रूटफुल एंड सक्सेसफुल लीगल रिक्वायरमेंट्स कंप्लाई करना बहुत ज़रूरी है आर्बिट्रल अवार्ड जो है एंड आर्बिट्रेटर जो खुद है पूरी प्रोसीडिंग्स जो हैं दे ऑल नीड टू कम्प्लाई विथ लीगल रिक्वायरमेंट्स इम्पार्शलिटी एंड कॉन्फिडेंशलिटी आर बेसिक थिंग्स फॉर एन आर्बिट्रेटर टू इंश्योर कैन एन आर्बिट्रल ट्रिब्यूनल बी टर्मिनेटेड येस आर्बिट्रेशन इज अ वॉलेंट्री इट्स अ पर्सनल अग्रीमेंट तो इफ द आर्बिट्रेटर डजन वॉन्ट टू कंटिन्यू ही कैन नॉट बी फोर्स टू कंटिन्यू इट्स अ पर्सनल अग्रीमेंट ही कैन रिजाइन एंड देर फोर द आर्बिट्रेशन और द आर्बिट्रेटर कम्स टू एन एंड यू कैन अपॉइंट समबडी एल्स इफ यू वॉन्ट रिमूवल बाई ऑल जस्ट वन पार्टी कैन नॉट रिमूव द आर्बिट्रेटर ऑल ऑफ द पार्टीज डिसाइड दैट दे वॉन्ट टू रिमूव द आर्बिट्रेटर गो हैड रिमूव द आर्बिट्रेटर ऑपरेशन ऑफ लॉ देर आर सर्टन थिंग्स इन लॉ फॉर एग्जाम्पल आर्बिट्रेशन डज नॉट कम्प्लीट इन ट्वेल्व मंथ्स तो ऑल ऑफ दीज फैक्टर्स विल लीड टू द आर्बिट्रेटर बींग टर्मिनेटेड दैन द कोर्ट मे रिमूव ऑन सर्टन सर्कमस्टांसिस द आर्बिट्रेटर एज वेल लेट्स टॉक अबाउट आर्बिट्रल अवार्ड्स आर्बिट्रल अवार्ड्स में देर आर फोर काइंड ऑफ आर्बिट्रल अवार्ड्स फाइनल इंटेरिम सेटलमेंट एंड एडिशनल सो फाइनल अवार्ड इज द अल्टीमेट द अवार्ड विच इज गिवेन आफ्टर द आर्बिट्रेशन प्रोसीडिंग समटाइम्स इन बिटवीन द आर्बिट्रेशन प्रोसीडिंग्स ऑल्सो सम सर्टन रिलीफ और अवार्ड्स में नीड टू बी गिवन दीज आर कॉल्ड इंटेरिम अवार्ड्स दैन some times the party may settle amongst themselves and come at a conclusion this award when adopted by the arbitrator is called a settlement award the arbitrator may not provide an award on all of the issues which were referred to him he might forget to make a judgment on some of the issues so within 30 days any party may apply that you need to judge on this particular issue which you have left out the arbitrator shall provide an additional award on such left out issues what are the requirements of the award one basic it needs to be written signed and dated it needs to be given by a majority in the arbitral tribunal reasons likhna bahut zaruri hai aisa nahi ki mujhe lagta hai theek hi hai no you need to give a reason for the arbitral award should not be vague not some have ki baat hai should be specific should be clear should be capable of being performed the arbitral award should not be an impossible event it should be capable of being performed it should not be illegal also cannot be something cannot ask for something which is not allowed by law delivery of the arbitral award then needs to be made to the parties to the arbitration agreement there are certain authorities under the arbitration conciliation act so these authorities number one there are certain judicial authorities which are there and secondly there are courts so courts are basically like the district court high court supreme court these are the courts judicial authority thoda sa bada term hai it's a term wider in its meaning and ambit than the court 
so judicial authority also includes other special tribunals such as consumer redressal forums all of these are also covered within the judicial authority so as per a supreme court case it was said that the term judicial authority is wider in its meaning than court and every court is a judicial authority but every judicial authority is not a court supreme court high court if an appointment of an arbitrator is not able to be done by the procedure that we just said or whatever procedure it was not laid out then for appointment of arbitrator in international commercial arbitration it will go to the supreme court if it's a domestic arbitration it will go to the high court all other matters overseeing supervisory functions appeals they will be dealt with in international commercial arbitration by high court in other that is a domestic arbitration by the district court and high court appeal so there can be several reasons for example there can be bias now for example if an appeal is to be raised for bias first it needs to be raised before the arbitral tribunal itself arbitral tribunal arbitrator ko pehle bologe ki humko lagta hai bias hai wo judgment jo bhi de then you can go to the district court or high court as the case may be now within 3 months if you are appealing so bias is one of the reasons overstepping of jurisdiction that they did not the arbitrator did not have a right to give the arbitral agreement did not cover these issues or they cover these issues but they were not submitted for arbitration we didn't think it was worthy enough to go in for arbitration incapacity of the arbitrator or the parties they were not capable of contracting invalid arbitral agreement no notice the parties did not receive any notice about the initiation of the arbitration proceedings dispute not submittable to arbitration then not as per law against a public policy and not arbitrable so there are certain disputes which are not arbitrable we spoke about them if, if judgment is given on those you can raise a challenge against it and it will be reversed it shall be set aside this completes arbitration for us let's move on to conciliation conciliation may the features of conciliation the first feature is that it's a voluntary conciliation is a purely voluntary process you cannot force anybody to come into conciliation the second it's non adversarial sometimes in arbitration it may lead to a win lose position one party may win and the other party may feel that they have lost so in this case in conciliation that feeling doesn't come in generally the parties discuss among themselves there is a conciliator who plays a very proactive role wo help karta hai parties ko ki aap apne disputes settle karo and that's why the parties feel that it will lead to a win win situation for both so it's non adversarial in nature assisted procedure the conciliator plays a very proactive role in the conciliation proceedings helping the parties to come out with a settlement or a solution that's why it's an assisted procedure finality of settlement and a confidentiality that's the same as arbitration now now there's another concept it's an alternate dispute resolution mechanism as well that's mediation so what's the difference between conciliation and mediation mediation is somewhat a process which is much less proactive conciliation the conciliator plays a much more proactive role the mediator plays a role which is much softer in nature than a conciliator this conciliation is governed by the arbitration conciliation act 1996 mediation is just governed by the code of civil procedures confidentiality it's mostly based on trust in case of the mediation however in conciliation there are strict legal provisions to ensure con confidentiality the outcome of conciliation is a settlement agreement मीडिएशन से आता है एक कॉन्ट्रैक्ट जो पार्टीज अल्टीमेटली डिसाइड करेंगे दैट विल बी अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दिस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज इन्फोर्स लाइक अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बट दिस सेटलमेंट अग्रीमेंट इज इन्फोर्स लाइक एन आर्बिट्रल अवार्ड लाइक अ डिक्री ऑफ द कोर्ट ब्रीच ऑफ आउटकम अगर होता है दैट इज इफ द सेटलमेंट अग्रीमेंट इज ब्रीच देन देर आर स्पेसिफिक रेमिडीज अंडर द एक्ट अवेलेबल इफ ब्रीच इज ऑफ द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दैन इज डेल्ट विद लाइक अ ब्रीच ऑफ द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट द इंटायर प्रोसीडिंग शेल फॉलो conciliators the number of conciliators can be maximum number 3 they can be 1 2 or 3 yes even 2 is allowed for conciliation but maximum 3 conciliators shall be allowed 
this completes our arbitration conciliation act let's move on to the next act now let's start with the foreign contribution regulation act 2010 fcra 2010 may the first definition that we will see is foreign company four points hai. first foreign company means a foreign company defined under the companies act 2013 second point is that is a subsidiary of a foreign company number 3 is a registered office or principal place of business of the foreign company as defined above and number 4 is a multinational corporation any corporation incorporated registered outside india which has its place of business subsidiary or branch in two or more countries or operates otherwise in two or more countries is will be called as which shall be deemed to be a multinational corporation foreign contribution foreign contribution is a donation delivery or transfer of any article other than being a gift for personal purpose up to rupees 1 lakh in market value or any currency whether indian or foreign or any security defined under the foreign exchange management act that's fema or under the securities contract regulation act that is scra foreign hospitality foreign hospitality is an offer not being purely a casual one for the cost of travel to a foreign country or for free lodging boarding medical treatment or transportation now foreign contribution jo hai that is prohibited to be given to these people foreign hospitality pe kuch restrictions hai foreign contribution prohibited kin cases mein hai if it is given to number 1 organization of political nature political party office bearers candidates for election member of legislature organization of political nature political parties or office bearer then candidates for election members of legislature the next set is judges government servants government employees then the third set is company which is associate or association which is in the production or broadcast of news and uske columnists cartoonists editors publishers printers all of these persons cannot accept any foreign contribution जो ऑफिस बेरर्स ऑफ पॉलिटिकल पार्टी है मेंबर्स ऑफ लेजिस्लेचर्स हैं जजेस गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉयज गवर्नमेंट सर्वेंट्स आर रिस्ट्रिक्टेड फ्रॉम टेकिंग फॉरेन हॉस्पिटैलिटी इफ दे विश टू ऑबटेन और एंजॉय फॉरेन हॉस्पिटैलिटी दे शैल विद इन टू वीक्स फ्रॉम द डेट ऑफ देयर आउटसाइड ट्रैवल टेक अ परमिशन फ्रॉम द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट अवेवर इफ एनी एमरजेंट मेडिकल एड इज गिवेन to such a person outside india for a condition which is developed outside india then in such case prior permission is not required however intimation shall need to be made within one month from the date of obtaining such a medical treatment however if the amount is up to rupees 1 lakh no such intimation shall also be required kyunki ye tabiyat kharab ho gayi aapki to aap pehle permission nahi le paoge तो तब बाद में आपको देने का प्रोविजन है बट एक लाख तक के अगर आपने केवल लिया है तो फिर कोई बाद में बताने की जरूरत भी नहीं पड़ेगी देन देर आर सर्टन एक्सेप्शन दैट सेक्शन थ्री दैट इज द प्रोहिबिशन ऑन फॉरेन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन डज नॉट अप्लाई इन दीज केसेस वॉट आर दोज केसेस दैट्स फॉर सैलरी वेजेस देन फॉर एनी पेमेंट और रेमिटेंस इन ऑर्डनरी कोर्स ऑफ बिजनेस दैट इज एक्सपोर्ट्स इम्पोर्ट्स as an agent with the of a foreign source for transaction with the central government or the state government scholarship stipend etc gifts as an indian delegate if you receive as per the rules then that is also not covered within the prohibition or gifts from relatives however if more than gifts of rupees 1 lakh received in a financial year intimation shall need to be made to the central government within 30 days section 7 says that there is a prohibition on transfer of foreign contribution to any other person koi aur person aap transfer kar sakte ho if the other person is registered or has prior permission if the other person does not have any prior permission or registration then in that case foreign contribution general rule cannot be transferred to him 
however up to 10% can be transferred to such unregistered a person having no prior permission up to 10% with a prior approval of the central government in such case a declaration shall need to be given that the foreign contribution shall be used utilized for an appropriate purpose can foreign contribution be used for speculative purposes no it cannot be used for any speculative purpose over here shares stock market real estate all of it constitutes speculative purposes can foreign exchange be used for administrative purposes yes foreign exchange can be used for administrative purpose up to 50% if you want to spend more foreign contribution more than this 50% on administration purposes you will need a permission from the central government section 11 says that a registration or prior permission is required so if the entity has a defined social cultural economic this program if it exists then it will go in for a registration but if it is for a specific amount from a specific source then will go in for a prior permission just ek chote sa ek particular transaction hai you go in for a prior permission so if you have a registration or prior permission only then can you accept foreign contribution under the act foreign contribution ke liye permission ya registration lene ke liye you need to make an application to the central government central government shall deal with this application within a period of 90 days the registration if granted will remain for a period of 5 years if registration is refused or prior permission is refused reasons shall need to be given out unless the government is not required to give out such reasons because of exemptions under the right to information act rti act 2005 now this certificate needs to be renewed 5 years was the duration so this renewal of the certificate needs to happen at least 6 months before the expiry of the registration now if you do not re renew your certificate within such period you will need to get a condonation of delay condonation delay kab tak milega for 1 year after the date of expiry till that period you can still get a renewal after that then you will need to apply for a fresh registration so can a suspension or cancellation of this certificate of registration take place yes first if you have a question of cancellation that you think that there might be a case where you may need to cancel the certificate of registration you may suspend it for a period of 180 days during such period of suspension the person cannot receive any foreign contribution however if he wants to utilize the foreign contribution then up to 25% with approval of the central government shall be allowed the balance 75% can only be used after you have been cleared of the suspension cancellation of certificate can it happen cancellation bhi ho sakta hai panch karanon se cancel ho sakta hai you have a fraudulent incorrect application which has been filed you have violated the terms and conditions for which you were granted registration the terms and conditions in the certificate of registration number 3 you have violated the laws the provisions of the foreign contribution regulation act or the rules regulations framed there under number 4 that you have you do not have any reasonable activity for a preceding period of 2 years or you have become defunct and number 5 is if the government believes in public interest that such registration should be cancelled it can be cancelled once the registration is cancelled a cooling period of 3 years shall become applicable now about bank accounts to receive a foreign contribution whether bank accounts need to be separate yes the person can only receive a foreign contribution in a single account that account needs to be separate and that account can only be for foreign contribution for utilization of foreign contribution can it be done from multiple bank accounts yes multiple bank accounts can be used for utilization of foreign contribution foreign contribution can be dispersed utilized from multiple bank accounts however all of those bank accounts should be dedicated specifically and used only and only for foreign contribution now the bank needs to report to a specified authority the amount the source the manner and the other prescribed particulars of the foreign contribution received 
and also to the central government within 48 hours the receipt and utilization of the foreign contribution so specified authority ko batana hai central government ko batana hai within 48 hours person now ye jo person hai ye specified authority ko amount manner of source ye dono to bataye gaye sath mein purpose also he will need to tell the specified authority and also the central government ko he will need to submit a statement certified by the bank or authorized person separate books of accounts needs to be maintained for receipt and utilization and the central government can cause an audit to be conducted if it thinks fit this completes our foreign contribution regulation act also we'll move on to the next act now now let's start with surface e2002 तो सबसे पहले इसमें एसिड रिकंस्ट्रक्शन कंपनीज के बारे में एसिड रिकंस्ट्रक्शन कंपनी टू डू अ बिजनेस ऑफ एसिड रिकंस्ट्रक्शन इट रिक्वायर्स टू मीट टू कंडीशंस नंबर वन ऑप्टेन अ रजिस्ट्रेशन सर्टिफिकेट एंड नंबर टू हैव अ नेटवर्क ऑफ एट लीस्ट रुपीज हंड्रेड क्रोर्स सो फॉर ऑप्टेनिंग अ रजिस्ट्रेशन सर्टिफिकेट देर आर सेवन कंडीशन फॉर दिस एप्लीकेशन टू बी मेड सो नंबर वन द कंडीशन नंबर वन इज that preceding three financial years no loss should have happened should have number two that is should have an adequate arrangement for realization of financial assets number three the director should have appropriate professional expertise number four the directors should not be convicted of offense of moral turpitude directors ke baare mein do point now the fifth point is on sponsor the sponsor should be a fit and proper person and the last two points on compliance so compliance with the prudential norms and compliance with legal requirements if you meet these conditions then if it is thought appropriate a certificate of registration shall be given to you after you receive a certificate of registration if you want to do these three changes you will require a prior approval of the rbi if you do these changes without obtaining a prior approval of rbi a certificate of registration shall stand cancelled what are those three changes number one change in management including the managing director director or ceo number two change in the registered office of the arc number three change in the name of the arc there are certain grounds on which the registration certificate of arc can be cancelled so number one there are four three categories in which i have divided it the last one that's the fourth one was what we talked about that prior approval agar nahi liya for those three changes then that will get cancelled so the remaining three categories are number one it ceases to carry out the business of asset reconstruction number two ceases to receive or hold investments from qualified buyers the second category it fails to comply with the conditions for application fails to comply with conditions on which registration was given to it or fails to comply with the directions of rbi now the last category is it fails to maintain the required books of accounts and other documents or fails to provide a books of accounts other information as may be required by rbi within specified time these can lead to cancellation of certificate of the arc now arc can do certain other functions as well so it can act as an agent for a bank or financial institution for recovering its financial asset or debts which have been given it can act as a manager for the secured assets for the secured creditor it can act as a receiver for the court or tribunal so if the arc wants to do any other business then in that case it will require a prior approval however for this purpose of this particular section arc does not include its subsidiary now the financial asset of the arc if it is acquired a notice of this needs to be given to the obligor to the registering authority and any other concerned person when this notice is given the arc may obviously go in for two different things if it may believes that the asset can be restructured then it will go in for asset reconstruction if it believes that the assets cannot be restructured then it will go in for enforcement of security interest so measurement of measures of asset reconstruction what will those be so let's divide it into three categories number 1 it can sell or lease the business or it can take over the management of the business then it can reschedule the debts or it can settle the debts 
or a lesser amount or it can convert the debt into equity the last category would be take possession of the assets or enforce the security interest these cases are known as measures for asset reconstruction the last one out of that was enforcement of security interest so if the secured creditor decides to enforce his security interest then he shall send a notice to the obligor that is the original person who owes the debt so that debt to be discharged within a period of 60 days this person now this obligor has an option of repaying the debt or can give any objections that he believes stand true so if the objections are found valid then it's all right otherwise the debt will need to be paid within 15 days the arc if it believes that the objects objections are not acceptable to it will provide that the objections are not acceptable to me and you need to pay off your debt if the obligor doesn't pay off the debt then these four things can be done it can take over the management of the business it can take over the possession of the assets it can appoint a manager for the secured assets or a person may suppose a person other person has acquired the secured assets for example the obligor raised a charge against one of its secured assets and usne kisi aur jan ko ye secured asset de diya so now you can recover this secured asset from that person that amount to which the security hold valid so these are the measures which the arc can take for enforcement of security interest management of business of the obligor how can that be done ek notice dena padega aapko in an english newspaper and a indian language newspaper when that notice is given tabhi ke tabhi all the directors jitne management person in charge of management honge they shall be deemed to have vacated their office if any agreement was there with this person of management and the company that compensation needs to be given all of those shall not hold valid no compensation needs to be given to these people when the directors vacate the office under such circumstance also three other things shall hold valid number 1 the shareholders cannot appoint or nominate any other person to manage the company no resolutions can be passed by the shareholders without prior approval of the secured creditor and winding up bhi cannot be initiated without prior approval of the secured creditor so three implications apart from the directors vacating office if management of business does not satisfy you then you may auction off the immovable property however if uh, even after auctioning off and selling the immovable property you're not able to recover your entire amount then for that balance amount you can apply to a drt that's a debt recovery tribunal for recovery of the balance amount if however any person the obligor say is aggrieved by an action of the secured creditor believes that the action of secured creditor is not appropriate it's not right it can file an appeal against such action file a complaint against such action with the drt the debt recovery tribunal within 45 days if you want to appeal against the order of the debt recovery tribunal you can go to the appellate tribunal within 30 days but for going to the appellate tribunal minimum 50% of the amount which is due needs to be deposited however in certain circumstances this 50% amount can be reduced by the appellate tribunal to 25% the secured creditor can also file a caveat which will remain valid for a period of before the drt or the appellate tribunal so this completes our entire act now let's move on to the last one So let's start with the insolvency bankruptcy code 2016 IBC 2016 ka heart is the CIRB corporate insolvency resolution process iska trigger point is a default default ke sath sath it needs to be for rupees 1 lakh or more agar isse kam ka hai to ye act ye code applicable nahi hoga ye jo 1 lakh ki limit hai isko increase karke 1 crore tak liya ja sakta hai आज कितनी लिमिट है वन लाख इंक्रीज करना चाहे तो कहाँ तक ले जा सकते हैं वन करोड़ फाइलिंग ऑफ एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोसेस कैन बी डन बाय ऑपरेशनल क्रेडिटर फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर या कॉर्पोरेट एप्लीकेंट कॉर्पोरेट एप्लीकेंट मतलब कॉर्पोरेट डेटर इट सेल्फ नाउ ये जो ऑपरेशनल क्रेडिटर एंड फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर के बीच में डिफरेंस है 
that is on basis of time value of money if the payments of the debt that need to be made are on basis of time value that is interest ke payments loan interest so that is a financial creditor agar generally goods and services ki jaise baat usme time value is not the relevant aspect there is some good or service which has been provided so that is an operational creditor operational creditor agar aap hain so you need to send a notice a demand notice and a copy of invoice of 10 days to the corporate debtor ye jo corporate debtor hai ये रिस्पॉन्ड करेगा आपको कि आज तक के डिमांड नोटिस के डे के पहले कोई डिस्प्यूट पेंडिंग थी क्या या फिर वाई द या यू मेक द पेमेंट तो या तो डिस्प्यूट पेंडिंग बिफोर द डेट ऑफ डिमांड नोटिस या तो फिर यू मेक द पेमेंट इफ दिस बोथ इज नॉट डन विद इन अ पीरियड ऑफ टेन डेज देन एन एप्लीकेशन कैन बी फाइल्ड बाय दिन द ऑपरेशनल क्रेडिटर नीड्स टू फाइल द फॉलोइंग थिंग्स द सपोर्टिंग डॉक्यूमेंट्स विच आर रिक्वायर्ड नंबर वन एविडेंस सपोर्टिंग दैट की डिफॉल्ट हैज़ अकर्ड तो इसमें आप दोगे डिमांड नोटिस कॉपी ऑफ इन्वाइस एफिडेविट कि कोई डिस्प्यूट्स आपके उसके साथ पेंडिंग नहीं है बिफोर द डेट ऑफ द डिमांड नोटिस दैन जो आपका सर्टिफिकेट फ्राम अ फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन ले आओ या इन्फॉर्मेशन यूटिलिटी से इन्फॉर्मेशन ले आओ या कोई भी और तरीके से आप ये प्रूव कर दो कि आज तक के इसने आपको पेमेंट नहीं किया है साथ साथ आप नेम ऑफ इंसॉल्वेंसी रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल आई आर पी इंटेरिम रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल जो है इंटेरिम पीरियड के लिए जो रहेगा आप उसका नाम एक स्पेसीफाई कर सकते हो देर इज एन ऑप्शन टू द ऑपरेशनल क्रेडिटर्स दैट दे वॉन्ट टू स्पेसीफाई दे कैन एंड एनी अदर प्रिस्क्राइब पर्टिकुलर्स फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर जो है उनको एविडेंस इन सपोर्ट ऑफ डिफॉल्ट तो देना ही है नेम ऑफ आई आर पी देना कंपल्सरी है एंड एनी अदर स्पेसीफाइड इन्फॉर्मेशन न कॉर्पोरेट एप्लीकेंट तो कॉर्पोरेट एप्लीकेंट में कॉर्पोरेट डेटर खुद भी एक कॉर्पोरेट एप्लीकेंट हो सकता है तो इसको बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट्स डॉक्यूमेंट्स देने पड़ेंगे नेम ऑफ द इंस्टेरिम रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल कंपलसरी टू बी स्टेटेड एंड उसके साथ साथ एक स्पेशल रेजोल्यूशन पास करके लाना पड़ेगा अगर ये एल है दैन थ्री फोर्थ ऑफ द पार्टनर्स का रेजोल्यूशन उसको लाना पड़ेगा हु आर नॉट अलाउड टू फाइल अ कॉर्पोरेट द इंसॉल्वेंसी रेजोल्यूशन प्रोसेस के लिए एप्लीकेशन तो कॉर्पोरेट डेटर हु इज़ ऑलरेडी अंडर गोइंग एन इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोसेस अगर वो ऑलरेडी रेजोल्यूशन में है तो कैसे फाइल कर सकता है लिक्विडेशन ऑर्डर हैज़ बीन फाइल्ड अगेंस्ट द कॉर्पोरेट डेटर ही हैज़ कम्प्लीटेड द इंसॉल्वेंसी रेजोल्यूशन प्रोसेस इन द प्रीसीडिंग ट्वेल्व मंथ्स या तो फिर कॉरपोरेट डेटर और कोई भी क्रेडिटर जो फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर हैं वो कोई भी फाइल नहीं कर सकता एप्लीकेशन इफ़ ही हैज़ वायलेटेड एनी टर्म्स ऑफ द रेजोल्यूशन प्लान इन द प्रीसीडिंग ट्वेल्व मंथ्स अगर ये जो रेजोल्यूशन प्लान आपका हुआ था अप्रूव हो गया आपने उसको वायलेट कर लिया तो अब वापस से देर इज़ नो क्वेश्चन ऑफ एनी इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोसेस टू बी स्टार्टेड अगेन नाउ यू डायरेक्टली गो इन फॉर वाइंडिंग अप अगर आपको ये एप्लीकेशन विदड्रॉ करना है अब तो दिस एप्लीकेशन कैन बी विदड्रॉ येस नाइन्टी परसेंट कमिटी ऑफ क्रेडिटर्स के वोट के साथ ये एप्लीकेशन विदड्रॉ किया जा सकता है एन सी एल टी इज द एडुडिकेटिंग अथॉरिटी फॉर द कॉरपोरेट इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोफेशनल प्रोसेस अब ये जो इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोसेस है इसका एप्लीकेशन फाइल हुआ दैट नीड्स टू बी एक्सेप्टेड और रिजेक्टेड विद इन फोर्टीन डेज अगर इसमें कोई डिफेक्ट है इनकम्प्लीट है तो देन विद इन सेवन डेज यू विल नीड टू रेक्टिफाई दैट डिफेक्ट अगर ये एप्लीकेशन अब एक्सेप्ट हो जाता है तो इमीजिएटली एक मोरटोरियम मतलब स्टैंड स्टिल टाइम स्टॉप्स विल बी इम्पोज दिस मोरटोरियम विल स्टॉप फोर थिंग्स any proceeding against the company any enforcement of security interest or action under the surface act no owner or lesser can enforce any of his rights against the corporate debtor ye teen protection hai and the fourth one is the corporate debtor cannot sell transfer lease out his assets so one three restriction save us and one restriction puts a limitation on us Now, what transactions can be done? जिस पे मोरटोरियम नहीं लगता है मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट आउट ऑफ दैम इज ए श्योरिटी तो श्योरिटी मतलब एक गारंटर तो दिस गारंटर जो है इसके ट्रांजेक्शन अगर किसी ने गारंटी दी फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ डायरेक्टर हैज गिवन अ डायरेक्ट गारंटी ऑफ द ट्रांजेक्शन सो ही देन कैन नॉट क्लेम दैट देर इज अ मोरटोरियम देन देर वुड बी नो मोरटोरियम देन सर्टन अदर नोटिफाइड ट्रांजेक्शन एंड इसेंशियल गुड्स इसेंशियल गुड्स श्योरिटी एंड नोटिफाइड ट्रांजेक्शन ये तीन चीज़ों पर देर वुड बी नो मोरटोरियम ना वंस दिस इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोसेस स्टार्ट ऑब्वियसली इंसॉल्वेंसी इंटेरियम रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल जो है 
विल नीड टू बी अपॉइंटेड ऑपरेशनल क्रेडिटर ने अगर स्पेसिफाई किया था तो उसी को अपॉइंट कर दिया जाएगा प्रोवाइडेड देर आर नो डिसिप्लिनरी प्रोसीडिंग्स पेंडिंग अगेंस्ट द इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोफेशनल इन टेरिम रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल जब आएगा उससे तीन दिन के अंदर उसको एक पब्लिक अनाउंसमेंट करना पड़ता है पब्लिक अनाउंसमेंट में बताना पड़ता है कि इसका इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोसेस चालू हो गया यू नीड टू सेंड योर क्लेम्स बिफोर सो एंड सो डेट इसके नाम ये था डायरेक्टर्स ये थे अथॉरिटी इसके अंदर रजिस्टर था एंड ऑल ऑफ दोज डिटेल्स ही विल टेक ओवर द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द कंपनी ही विल हैव ऑल द पावर्स ऑफ द बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स और पार्टनर्स जो एग्जिस्टिंग बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स पार्टनर्स हैं वो वेकेट कर जाएंगे ऑफिस और ही विल मैनेज द इंटायर कंपनी ऑल द इम्प्लॉयज विल बी रिपोर्टिंग टू हिम बैंक फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन से ये इंफॉर्मेशन भी अपने अकाउंट्स के बारे में मांग सकता है जो इंटेरियम रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल है जो अपॉइंट होता है ही नीड्स टू बी अपॉइंटेड विद इन फोर्टीन डेज ऑफ द कमेंसमेंट इज टर्म इज टिल द एंड और टिल द अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ द रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल उसका रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल जो अपॉइंट होता है वो ये सेम ही पर्सन को रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल आप बना सकते हैं या तो फिर कोई और जन को आप बना सकते हैं वो डिसीजन लेता है कमिटी ऑफ क्रेडिटर्स तो कमिटी ऑफ क्रेडिटर्स फॉर्म करना भी ये इंटेरियम रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल की एक रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी होती है इंटेरियम रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल सारे क्लेम्स जो कलेक्ट करेगा उससे कमिटी ऑफ क्रेडिटर्स बनाएगा अगर कंपनी में फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर्स हैं तो सारे जितने फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर्स जो अनरिलेटेड हैं रिलेटेड पार्टी नहीं है वो फॉर्म करेंगे आपके कमिटी ऑफ क्रेडिटर्स ये सारे डिसीजन लेंगे अपने को जितने 99% जगहों में को, जो क्वेश्चन है वोटिंग राइट्स का वहाँ पर 66% बोला गया है वोटिंग राइट्स अपने को चाहिए जबकि एक्ट में तो जनरल रूल इज 51% परसेंट बट यहाँ पर तो जनरल रूल फॉर अस इज 66% परसेंट एंड एक जगह अपन ने अभी देखा विदड्रॉवल ऑफ एप्लीकेशन रिक्वायर्स नाइन्टी आगे भी एक और डिफरेंट देखेंगे फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर्स जो है अगर ये हैं देन दे आर फॉर्मिंग हाउ एवर इफ देर आर नो फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर्स देन इन दैट केस द एटीन लार्जेस्ट ऑपरेशनल क्रेडिटर्स बाई वैल्यू वन रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फ्रॉम द वर्कमैन एंड वन रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फ्रॉम द एम्प्लॉय दीज विल फॉर्म द कमिटी ऑफ क्रेडिटर्स देर वोटिंग राइट्स विल बी प्रपोर्शनेट टू द अमाउंट ऑफ द डेट विच इज ओड टू दैम द नोटिस ऑफ सच मीटिंग नीड्स टू बी गिवेन एंड अ कोरम ऑफ थर्टी थ्री परसेंट एट लीस्ट शुड बी प्रेजेंट इन द मीटिंग नोटिस नीड्स टू बी गिवन टू द मेम्बर्स ऑफ द कमिटी ऑफ क्रेडिटर्स ऑपरेशनल क्रेडिटर्स अगर सिग्निफिकेंट जैसे मोर देन टेन परसेंट अगर होल्ड करते हैं ऑफ द टोटल डेट या तो फिर इसके साथ साथ ऑल्सो द मेम्बर्स ऑफ द सस्पेंडेड बोर्ड जो है उनको भी आपको एक नोटिस देना पड़ेगा जो रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल है ये रेजोल्यूशन प्रोफेशनल के लिए एलिजिबिलिटी कंडीशन क्या होती हैं नंबर वन ही शुड बी क्वालिफाइड ही शुड बी क्वालिफाइड टू बी अपॉइंटेड एज एन इंडिपेंडेंट डायरेक्टर अंडर सेक्शन वन फोर्टी नाइन ऑफ द कंपनीज एक्ट टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन सेकेंड ही शुड नॉट बी अ रिलेटेड पार्टी नंबर थ्री ही शुड नॉट बी एन एम्प्लॉय प्रोपराइटर और पार्टनर ऑफ नंबर वन अ फर्म ऑफ ऑडिटर्स ऑफ द कंपनी और द कॉर्पोरेट डेटर और शुड नॉट बी एन एम्प्लॉय प्रोपराइटर पार्टनर of a legal consulting firm whose gross receipts ka 5% or more in the preceding 3 financial years is from this corporate debtor replacement of resolution professional is possible by a 66% vote the general rule for time limit is 180 days plus 90 days general rule says ki maximum 180 days plus a one time extension of maximum 90 days can be given however the insolvency process should be completed within a total period of 330 days including the extension and legal proceedings now if within this 330 days this entire process is not completed then you will go in for liquidation a resolution plan the first option which was there is ki resolution plan aapka hona chahiye तो रेजोल्यूशन प्लान रेजोल्यूशन एप्लीकेंट दे सकता है नाउ दिस रेजोल्यूशन प्लान नीड्स टू बी अप्रूव्ड बाय अ वोटिंग राइट्स इन द कमिटी ऑफ क्रेडिटर्स ऑफ 66 परसेंट और मोर इट शुड बी सबमिटेड देन टू द एडजुडिकेटिंग अथॉरिटी इफ द एडजुडिकेटिंग अथॉरिटी थिंक्स अप्रोप्रिएट दैट दिस इज एन अप्रोप्रिएट रेजोल्यूशन प्लान इट शेल गिव अ ग्रीन सिग्नल गो हैड हाउ अदरवाइज ये बोलेगा कि नो यू शुड इनिशिएट लिक्विडेशन तो वॉट आर द केसेज जहाँ पर लिक्विडेशन इनिशिएट हो सकते हैं वेर द रेजोल्यूशन प्लान इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेड बाई द एडुडिकेटिंग अथॉरिटी वेर नो रेजोल्यूशन प्लान इज सबमिटेड विद इन द पीरियड ऑफ सच ए थ्री हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी डेज 
थर्ड इज की वेर द कमिटी ऑफ क्रेडिटर्स डिसाइड बाय अ वोट ऑफ सिक्सटी सिक्स परसेंट और मोर दैट देर शुड बी अ लिक्विडेशन राधर देन रिजॉल्विंग वी नीड टू गो एन फॉर अ लिक्विडेशन इट कैन बी डिसाइडेड एट एनी टाइम ऑफ द इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोसेस एंड नंबर फोर दैट देर इज एनी कॉन्ट्रवेंशन ऑफ द रेजोल्यूशन प्लान वंस अ लिक्विडेशन ऑर्डर हैज बीन गिवन देन इन दैट केस अ मोरटोरियम now this is a second moratorium which shall be imposed at the time of liquidation the liquidator will now collect all the claims from creditors within 30 days of this liquidation commencement and decide how will the proceeds be distributed the first thing that needs to be talked about is ki secured creditors kya choose karte hain to so, secured creditors kya choose karenge will determine ki baki logo ko fir kaise milega so first thing is ki agar creditor apna claim batayega so a 14 day time is given ki wo creditor apna claim change kar sakta hai and from the claim given since 7 days ke andar the claim shall either be accepted or rejected by the liquidator there are certain transactions which are undervalued transactions preferential transactions or transactions defrauding creditors these transactions they can be reported to the adjudicating authority nclt in our case फॉर एन इंडिविजुअल्स फॉर दी अदर वंस लाइक पर्सनल जो लोग हैं उनके लिए डी आर टी है दैट इज अ डेट रिकवरी ट्रिब्यूनल एंड अपील्स गो टू डेट रिकवरी अपील ए ट्रिब्यूनल फॉर अस दैट इज अ कॉर्पोरेट इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोसेस में द एडजुडिकेटिंग अथॉरिटी इज एन सी एल टी नेशनल कंपनी लॉ ट्रिब्यूनल एंड द अपील्स गो टू नेशनल कंपनी लॉ अपील ए ट्रिब्यूनल नेकलैट तो नाउ अगर ऐसे कोई ट्रांजैक्शंस हैं देन इन दैट केस यू नीड टू अप्लाई टू एडजुडिकेटिंग अथॉरिटी दे विल डील विद इट अप्रोप्रिएटली डिक्लेयर्ड वॉइड वगैरह ये ट्रांजैक्शंस कब किए होने चाहिए ये ट्रांजैक्शंस अगर विद रिलेटेड पार्टीज अदर देन एम्प्लॉयज अगर हैं देन इन दैट केस दे कैन बी विद इन अ पीरियड ऑफ टू ईयर्स बिफोर द इंसॉल्वेंसी कमेंसमेंट डेट हावेवर इफ दे आर विद अदर देन रिलेटेड पार्टीज देन दे कैन बी फॉर मैक्सिमम पीरियड बिफोर वन ईयर फ्रॉम द इंसॉल्वेंसी कमेंसमेंट डेट then there can be some extortionate payments extortionate payments which can be made for credit transactions within 2 years of the commencement date you can apply matlab koi unnecessary too much payments have been made you can apply to a adjudicating authority options to secure creditors the first option available to them is to realize their secured interest ya to fir the other option is relinquish their secured interest If they realize their secured interest, then in that case, अगर उनके पास surplus बच जाता है this surplus needs to be given to the liquidator. अगर उनके पास deficit होता है so then we will see कि वो hierarchy में नीचे चले जाएंगे अगर वो relinquish कर देते हैं अपने rights, then in that case उनकी hierarchy में position ऊपर रहेगी See this. So distribution of assets में सबसे पहले the CIRP आई आर पी और लिक्विडेशन कॉस्ट विल बी पेड then the workman dues or 24 months preceding तक के but उसके साथ साथ परी पासू एट द सेम लेवल द रेलिंक्विश अगर किया हुआ है सिक्योर क्रेडिटर ने तब पे किया जाएगा द थर्ड लेवल इज एम्प्लॉयड यूज ऑफ ट्वेल्व मंथ्स देन द फाइनेंशियल डेट्स टू अनसिक्योर्ड क्रेडिटर्स देन द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट ड्यूज ऑफ प्रिसीडिंग टू फाइनेंशियल ईयर्स यहाँ पर अगर उसने रियलाइज नहीं किया था अपना सिक्योर्ड इंटरेस्ट सॉरी रियलाइज किया था सिक्योर्ड इंटरेस्ट बट उसका इनएडिकुएट पड़ जाता है देन इन दैट केस ही विल कम हियर एंड देन रिमेनिंग डेट्स एंड ड्यूज देन प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर्स इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स लेट्स डू दिस अगेन फर्स्ट सी आई आर पी दैट इज द कॉर्पोरेट इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोसेस कॉस्ट लिक्विडेशन कॉस्ट सेकेंड लेवल वर्कमैन ड्यूज ट्वेंटी फोर मंथ्स प्रिसीडिंग थर्ड लेवल एम्प्लॉय ड्यूज ट्वेल्व मंथ्स प्रिसीडिंग वर्कमैन ड्यूज के साथ सिक्योर क्रेडिटर्स इफ रेलिंक्विश्ड द सिक्योरिटी देन एम्प्लॉय ड्यूज ऑफ ट्वेल्व मंथ्स देन फाइनेंशियल डेट्स टू द अनसिक्योर्ड क्रेडिटर्स देन सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ड्यूज ऑफ प्रिसीडिंग टू ईयर्स उसके साथ अगर उन्होंने रियलाइज किया था सिक्योर क्रेडिटर्स ने अपना एसेट एंड इनएडिकुएट पड़ गया उसके बाद देन द अदर डेट्स एंड ड्यूज देन प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर्स एंड देन लास्ट इज इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स ये सब होने के बाद एन ऑर्डर ऑफ डिजोल्यूशन ऑफ द कॉर्पोरेट पर्सन शैल बी पास्ट दिस कंप्लीट्स आर कॉर्पोरेट इंसॉल्वेंसी रेजोल्यूशन प्रोसेस और फास्ट ट्रैक इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोसेस कैन आल्सो बी अडॉप्टेड द स्पेसिफाइड पीपल आर अलाउड टू गो इन फॉर अ फास्ट ट्रैक हु आर दोज नंबर वन पर्सन दैट इज एंटिटीज हैविंग एन एसेट और इनकम बिलो द नोटिफाइड लेवल 
सेकेंड इज हैव स्पेसिफाइड और नोटिफाइड क्लासेज ऑफ क्रेडिटर्स और अमाउंट ऑफ ड्यू एंड द थर्ड इज अदर नोटिफाइड एंटिटीज कॉरपोरेट पर्सन हु आर दोज नंबर वन स्मॉल कंपनीज नंबर टू स्टार्टअप्स नंबर थ्री अनलिस्टेड कंपनीज हैविंग अप टू वन करोर ऑफ टोटल एसेट्स वन करोर से या वन करोर या वन करोर से कम इन दिस केस दे कैन गो इन फॉर फास्ट ट्रैक रेजोल्यूशन फास्ट ट्रैक रेजोल्यूशन द टाइम लिमिट इज नाइन्टी डेज प्लस अ मैक्सिमम वन टाइम एक्सटेंशन ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव डेज द फोर्टी फाइव डे एक्सटेंशन कैन ओनली बी गिवन इफ द कमिटी ऑफ क्रेडिटर्स वोट्स इन सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट फॉर सच एक्सटेंशन द एप्लीकेशन फॉर फास्ट ट्रैक कैन बी फाइल्ड बाई क्रेडिटर्स और कॉरपोरेट डेटा वॉलेंट्री लिक्विडेशन वॉलेंट्री लिक्विडेशन इन केस वेर एन एंटिटी हैज नॉट हैड एनी डिफॉल्ट कैन ऑल्सो बी गो इन फॉर अ वॉलेंट्री लिक्विडेशन वॉलेंट्री लिक्विडेशन में डेक्लेशन बाई मेजोरिटी ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स नीड्स टू बी फाइल्ड अलॉन्ग विद ऑडिटेड फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स एंड अदर एक्टिविटी इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द बिजनेस फॉर प्रिसीडिंग टू फाइनेंशियल ईयर्स वैल्यूएशन रिपोर्ट फ्रॉम अ रजिस्टर्ड वैल्यूअर ऑल्सो नीड्स टू बी फाइल्ड A special resolution shall be required within four weeks of such a declaration. Special resolution के अलावा ordinary resolution से काम बन सकता है अगर इन में से तीन events हैं that is the articles provide for the liquidation, specified event provides for liquidation and that event has occurred and number थ्री is that specified time and that time has already elapsed. Along with that, if any dues are to creditors, then two third of the creditors shall also need to pass a resolution within seven days of the resolutions passed in the general meeting. Application then needs to be made to the adjudicating authority for dissolution of the entity. The adjudicating authority order for dissolution needs to be filed with the ROC within a period of fourteen days. So this finally completes our economic laws. So bye bye.